perfect number of people where we can actually go around and just ask people to identify themselves. Not too big of a group. Great. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I'm Michelle Puzo, the president and co-founder of Your Community Cares. Hi, everyone. My name is Donna Powell. I work with Michelle and our other co-founder, MD. Uh, my role is as an advisory board volunteer. I have a background in marketing, so I work on outreach, community events, and grant writing. Hello, I am MD Birmingham. I'm the co-founder that was mentioned by Michelle and Donna. <laughs> and I uh, take part in this organization, especially regarding the digital platform. Thank you for having us. Diane? Yep. So uh, Diane Stone, I'm the director of the Newington Senior and Disabled Center. I'm very happy to um, be part of this discussion and, and part of this kickoff into what I think is going to be something um, very helpful uh, in the town of Newington. And to make it easier, I'll kick it off to Barbara Walmer. Okay, um, I'm the program coordinator here at Newington Senior and Disabled Center, and I'm a Your Community Cares volunteer, but have not actually um, had the opportunity to take advantage of a volunteer appointment yet. Great, thanks, Barbara and Janice. Hi, I'm Janice. I am new to the program and um, I assist, um, I assist, um, oh my gosh, I assist Michelle. She is an employee from the Maturity Works um, company that has, helps us with um, tracking our insurance and, and volunteers and, and all of that stuff. So she'll be a great asset to us, um, but she is starting uh, just last week. So she'll be great. And Carol? Hi, I'm Carol Lebrecht, Director of Human Services. Um, very glad to be part of this, partnering with this program. I think it's going to be a valuable resource for the uh, community. And we have Michelle Royer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Michelle Royer. I am from the Lucy Robbins Wells Library in Newington. I'm head of community services and I do adult programming and bring services to adults wherever I can. And I'm very excited to learn all about what you do and how to get involved. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Diane. And on my screen, it's the bottom row. So I know it doesn't appear like that to everybody, but uh, I'm gonna introduce Karen Halpert, um, who is uh, one of the workers here at the Senior and Disabled Center. Um, I always get Karen's title wrong, even though I probably came up with the title, but Karen um, does all of our eligibility programs. So renter's rebate, um, circuit breaker, energy assistance. Um, Karen sees a lot of people in the community and is a great connector for people to um, help that they might need. Great. And we don't give her a camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Michelle Dempsey, I don't think we met. Hi, I'm Michelle Dempsey. I'm a Title 19 specialist, and I'm just interested in learning more about the programs that are available. Um, I sometimes have clients up in the Newington area um, and want to know more about the services that might be available to them. Great, thanks for joining us. Not very well put on, geez. Joe and Joyce Brown. That's who they are. Weird. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the Jane J. Brown. What? Hey, what 
And I think that's probably okay. Okay, let me mute them just for a second. And we have Hope Utterback. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Hope Utterback. I'm on the uh, York Community Cares um, Board of Directors and also our treasurer. And really happy to meet all of you and the opportunity for you guys to learn more about us. So thanks for coming. Great, I think that's everybody. All right, did you want me to kick it off then? Sure. Excellent. So it's great to see um, some people that we know and some people that um, we now know that we didn't know before. Um, and I want to welcome you, our community cares, to the town of Newington. Um, certainly, your organization is something that that is not um, new to us. We've heard about it, and we're happy that we're now partnering with you um, so that we can uh, have it as a tool for Newington residents um, and and a tool in kind of two ways. So when you look at the town of Newington, we're a beautiful suburban community. Um, we have a population of just over 30,000 and we have slightly higher older adult population than, than the state average. So we're about 27% of our population is age 60 and older. So that presents kind of two things. One is an opportunity to provide assistance to people because we certainly have people in our community that need a little bit help, of help uh, as they grow older and continue to live in the community. We also have this untapped resource of people that are over the age of 60 that are maybe looking to give back into the community that want to, um, although 25% of people I think over the age of 65 are still working, quite a few people are retired and they're looking for opportunities for how they can get involved in their community. And this is a, a great opportunity for people. So um, having a, a large older adult population is an opportunity and, and a challenge. Um, a little bit about the people in Newington. Um, about 87% of older adults in Newington own a car. That's pretty much how people get around. That means we do still have though 13% of the people that have no car, that might use Dial-A-Ride. That's kind of a limited service because it's only available um, certain hours during the day. Um, we do have some public transit that comes through, but there are people that certainly um, getting around the community can be a challenge uh, to living in the community. But we also have about 32% of our population that lives alone. So a lot of them are women. A lot of them are older women who are widowed. Um, so there comes a time in people's lives where they may need help managing their home. Um, people want to live at home. They want to live at home throughout their lifespan. And sometimes the difference between being able to live at home and not live at home is something as simple as uh, being able to clear your yard um, in the fall. So these are the kinds of things that we're really excited to see. The town has great services through the Senior and Disabled Center um, and through Human Services. We have some community groups that are engaged in things. And in a lot of ways, we are able to help people. But Carol can talk a, a little bit at the end about some of the gaps that we find where we have people who the, the traditional programs maybe don't quite work for, they maybe aren't eligible for home care services and they have a need and we look for an opportunity to fill that need. So um, we really see um, an opportunity for UR Community Cares to provide some of that connection and to help fill some of the um, gaps. So we're excited as, as the town of Newington with you know, the capital T um, to be able to connect people to each other to continue to make it a great community. Um, so I'm not going to talk any more about UR Community Cares. When I looked at the agenda, um, I'm turning that directly over to Michelle and Donna uh, to tell us more about how it works and how we can get involved. Great, thank you very much. That was a great introduction and we're, we're excited to um, continue to work with, with you and Carol and the rest of the um, town of Newington. Um, the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, you know, has given us a great opportunity with the Newington Greater Together grant that has awarded us $5,000 to better connect Newington residents. And just to give you guys a little bit more information about what we are, Your Community Cares is that community online platform, that website that allows 
older adults and people with disabilities to get assistance directly at their house, as, as she mentioned. So yourcommunitycares.org is that free innovative resource that helps connect neighbors to neighbors. And we, you know, use like the community roadmap idea that we're trying to build action. So we're hoping that after our presentation today, you know, you can get more involved with helping us build awareness in the town, um, referring someone that might be wanting to be a volunteer. We are looking for a hometown hero in the town of Newington that really can be our local liaison. We're looking for people that want to refer community members. Those people that need help is what we call community members. Um, feel free to invite us to, you know, an event, whether it be at your library, whether it be at an adult residence, um, we are able to come and, and present and, and sign people up at the same time. And you know we've got this grant for the for the year, so we want to think about ways that we can continue to collaborate over this next year. So we are not just in Newington; we are an online platform for the entire state of Connecticut. Volunteers are matched, specifically in Newington, um, with community members within their within the same town to help with housework yard work, companionship, and transportation. Those are our four categories right now. We added transportation last year. Uh, we're continuing to grow our services, but at this time we're um, limiting to these four categories. So the volunteers are background checked and the community members are background checked to try to make the platform as secure as possible. This does not include any medical or licensed work. So there's no personal care. There are many subcategories within housework, yard work, companionship, and transportation, but it does not include personal care or licensed work. We're leading that to the professionals. So we are excited to um, have the opportunity. MD and I, um, you know, started started this only a little over two years ago. Um, the website went live in June and then six months later, COVID-19 um, came to be. So the idea came to me when I was professionally going into people's homes, saw the needs in the community and saw that people were living to a, a hundred and hadn't really budgeted to live to a hundred, hadn't really planned what that was gonna do to their house. Um, how they were actually going to physically care for their house and themselves to 100. So that's where I went to MD and um, he helped create that community connection through yourcommunitycares.org. MD, do you want to talk about that um, a little bit? Sure. You know, when... Uh... When Michelle approached me with her idea, the first thing I thought of was what what is a resource that we can you know utilize and we can be able to connect individuals within the community and almost be everywhere at the same time. You know, really be efficient. And that's when um, I developed the platform to connect the volunteers with the community members within the same town and really help to maximize resources. And at first it started off on an individual level, person to person, but then we upgraded to have it be able to have partners or groups and organizations. So it's instead of it being a one-to-one, -one, it was a one-to-group or group-to-group. -group. And that would include things such as human services, um, civic uh, organizations, uh, and you know, police departments, church groups, you name it, any entity that wants to really take part in this. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we will definitely demo more of the website um, in a little bit, but we are excited that MD had that vision of creating this online opportunity so that we can be more scalable across the state and hopefully uh, beyond in time. But right now our, um, our volunteers, um, you know, everybody is 100% volunteer. No one gets paid. Uh, we have a 100% volunteer run organization at this time. Um, we are fully insured um, and we do background checks on all participants like I mes mes mentioned and also our website and email are as secure as, as we can be. We're basically one step down from um, HIPAA compliance. And Donna, I'll let you go over the road now. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I must say in recent memory, this is my first call with three Michelles. So that mm -hmm. should bring us some really, really good karma um, because all the Michelles I know seem to be very compassionate and giving individuals. So thank you to our three Michelles in attendance today, as well as everyone else. <laughs> um, so earlier in the slides, there was one that talked about a community roadmap, which we envision as having four components and the town leaders component with health and human services, we couldn't have had uh, a better uh, introduction to Newington as a new town for us than the support that you see here today of Diane Stone and Carol Lebrecht. So thank you so much for your interest and your really your mentorship and kind of showing us the ropes. Diane, those were some fantastic statistics you shared, very insightful for the town's demographics. And then we'll hear from Carol later. So we see a nice big check mark in number one where this first component where we've got um, we've spread the word um, to these very, very important individuals who are devoted full time to supporting um, older and disabled adults in that second quadrant would be local collaborators, for example. Um, if one of our Michelle's, if you are a social worker or someone is on the, the, the other Michelle from the library, um, that type of collaboration is really how we can pull all this together with us being the technology platform. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth on the volunteers and the community members. So Michelle, we can go on to the next slide. So the community members, the individuals in need, we have not turned anybody away, but on paper, we um, uh, set out a mission to fill the needs, the gaps for individuals age 70 and older, or any adult with a disability. Um, it could be something temporary, uh, from surgery or an illness, et cetera. The, ro our role here, our purpose is to enroll these individuals, which involves completing a background check, which involves providing personal identification information. And that can be done online or where needed with some assistance by phone. That community member once enrolled and assuming that they're using you know their email directly uh, they would actually initiate the requests for the various things the categories that michelle talked about so they would initiate that online with using different check boxes and comment boxes where they would say what day or time they're looking for many times the community members are flexible and they, they know that they're depending on the availability and the generosity of their volunteers. We like to think that this is kind of a form of respite uh, caregiving uh, windows where if we can pre-schedule and that volunteer kind of gets into a routine, then the family caregiver perhaps can go do something with that hour or so you know, on their own because they would come to count on the volunteer showing up. 
And as Michelle uh, may have mentioned, the services are all provided at no charge. We are uh, funded by donations, grants, et cetera. So um, we had one individual recently who wanted to basically pay it forward. She wanted to pay us for the services, which we do not accept, um, but she was open to making a donation that in essence would pay it forward in our budget covering direct program costs for somebody else um, who really needed the service. So that's really important to Michelle and MD's vision to keep access open and free of charge and covering you know, all ranges of ethnicities, uh, abilities, income levels, et cetera. So in the next slide for the volunteers, it's somewhat of a chicken and the egg where um, we do need um, people to respond to the requests from community members that we just talked about. We are able to accept volunteers as young as 15, but if they are minors, that would require adult consent and supervision for the visit. Each volunteer also enrolls online. They must be able to use email or, you know, check their smartphone for an alert. They're, they will be background checked as well, with a couple of exceptions, um, but we don't need to get into that here. Um, again, it's up to the volunteer to accept the requests by the community member. It can be at their convenience. Hopefully they will be meeting new neighbors within Newington, but they might be within a 15 mile radius if they want to travel to you know, an adjacent town. Um, there are many options, certainly with COVID, to not have to do in-person contact visits. There could be something virtual. There could be a, trap, a porch drop-off for errands or groceries. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And then as Michelle mentioned earlier, we use the term hometown hero which would kind of be our local Newington volunteer with some superpowers. They're willing to be our liaison, uh, maybe help enroll a community member, answer or maybe recruit some volunteers, um, maybe do a restaurant fundraiser here and there. And um, that person really, really knows the ropes. So if anyone comes to mind that might be an active retiree or somebody who's themselves looking to give back to the Newington community, maybe you could pass this on to them. So I'll turn things back over to Michelle. Thanks, Donna. So we are always focused, you know, we, we talked from the beginning about how we can make this the safest platform as possible. And that's why we decided to do background checks for all participants. We have many people that are moving into the state and, and not everybody, um, even if they're signed up from, you know, from a social worker or from a healthcare organization, they still might not really know the person. So um, background checks for all participants. Like I said, we're fully insured. Um, we're requiring the volunteers to, you know, keep up with all of the COVID-19 um, restrictions that, or guidelines. And our website is as secure as, um, as possible. So people can re register online or they can call us if they don't have access to the internet. Um, they, can, they can register multiple ways. And that means that they can be a community member. That's the person who needs help. That's when they're gonna sign up on the website to be a volunteer. Right at the top tab here, you will see all the different um, pages where you can read about how to become a community member and also be a partner. So if you haven't gone to our website before, that's where you can learn more information directly about the different ways of signing up. So a partner would receive authorization to enroll and schedule community needs from multiple community members or volunteers. So if, you know, for an example, Carol um, has, uh, is a partner at Human Services, so she can enroll people that don't have access to the internet 
and then she can um, schedule their community deeds, the things that they need help with on a monthly basis. The same thing for volunteers. If your business wanted to have an employee day where you did had a community day in Newington, then you could sign up a group of your employees or the high school, Newington High School could sign up a group of students to volunteer together. So that's the partner, but the volunteer partner that are community volunteer partners are not all the participants are not background checked because they're going together as a group so at the high school obviously we can't background check anyone under the age of 18 so they would have that parental consent it's almost like a field trip and they'd all go together um, so that's when donna said you know not all it's the group volunteers there's just the one administrator of the group that gets background checked and then the rest of the um, volunteers just have to sign that release. I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, in terms of the frequency that the community member can request services, we love participation. Background costs, uh, sorry, background checks are the biggest percentage of the direct program costs. And as some of you may know, a background check is valid for one year. So to really get the biggest bang for the buck or the, in this case, our grant funding, we would love for somebody to do what one of our Manchester participants does where she has one volunteer taking out her trash and recycling barrels. So that's like on a weekly, every other week basis, cause she just can't do that anymore. She, you know, her driveway is on an incline and, and she would hurt herself or have a fall risk. So, so she's doing that. She has somebody else doing her biweekly grocery shopping. And then maybe here and there, there's a monthly doctor's appointment, which is a transportation volunteer. And then seasonally, it could be leaf raking or snow removal. So we like to kind of cite that as kind of the perfect uh, example of how there's really a lot of value and support being delivered by community members to their neighbors, whether it's down the street or across town. Great point, thank you. And these are also some of our supporters that, um, you know, it's just a partial list. We're trying to um, highlight a lot of the grants that we've received, um, some of the were on um, two municipal budgets, um, receiving other donations, individual corporate and, and sponsorships, working on referrals from different partners across the across the state. Happy to be part of two one one in Connecticut, Boad, working on different fundraisers across the state and some that are um, online, and then some of the awards that we've we've been able to achieve, which has been a lot of fun. Um, so we're definitely, you know, trying to grow and we're really excited to get more into, into Newington. Again, I just want to jump in real quick. Um, Michelle and MD are very humble and inspiring and the listing of the award from the Brawny paper towel company had a, resulted in MD having to do a photo shoot wearing, of course, black and red plaid, right? Like the Barani paper towel hero. So that was one recognition that came with a nice cash contribution to our nonprofit. And then always competitive, Michelle, I think bested MD when she was on the Jumbotron at Dunkin Donuts Stadium during a recent Yard Goats game where Liberty Bank uh, was uh, praising the efforts of their latest round of community heroes. So there was Michelle in living color. Just had to add that. Yeah. That was a highlight, definitely. <laughs> um, so we, we are here to engage um, residents that really want, that have, time in their schedule to be a volunteer, to 
connect and have an understanding of how to support people that are aging in place at home that might need just a little bit of help on a weekly basis. We are not here to be, you know, five hours a day or volunteers can volunteer as much as they would like, but it's, it's not um, a requirement to set any amount of time per week. It's really what they can do because we are serving, um, we want to make sure that people are you know, being respectful of other people's time. So if a community member asked you to stay for three hours and you can only do an hour, you know, let that be known so you don't feel like you're you're being um, um, not in control of, of the um, community deeds. So the technology that we have, like MD Mess, Mes I can't speak, um, spoke of our technology for the good. And that's really what we are trying to do is, is make a positive impact in communities and make those intergenerational connections with all ethnicities and abilities across towns. And our website is um, in six different languages. If anybody requires a different, um, our flyers are in English and Spanish. And if anyone wanted a different language, please just let us know. Just adding to what Michelle said about technology for the good, you know, a lot of people think of technology as being something that is antisocial. And when we first developed this, the whole idea was to use technology as a tool to really help connect communities. And we use this to allow social interaction and help with so many different aspects that are just positive for the community to help connect resources and so forth. Yep, so anybody can go right to the website at the top of the page, it says sign up. That's where you're gonna go and um, choose your user type, whether you're the volunteer or the community member. We want a photo so that people can know who they're going to see and then who they should expect showing up at their door. So that would be the individual for the sign up volunteer and community member. If you wanna be a partner, that's where you'd go to be a partner page, click on be a partner. And these are some of our partners um, across the state. And you would go to become a partner and that would be either the community member or the volunteer. Um, and that's where you'd click to become a partner. I want to, um, give some time for any questions on sign up or if you want me to kind of go through um, the sign up process. Um, I want to leave it open to some questions now. Actually, um, we could also hear from Carol maybe to kind of pull it all together and then go back in. That's just an option. Sure. Um, well, it, this presentation, I thought, answered a lot of, probably a lot of people's questions. And I think this is um, a really valuable resource for Newington. I know that Diane and I are pleased um, to be uh, collaborating with this um, program. And I've got several folks um, that we've identified already who uh, may be in need of services in an ongoing way. Um, so again, I think this meets a need both for we get people approaching us looking to do some volunteer work and we get people approaching us that just need that little bit of extra help. So I think this is going to, to be a win-win and, and fill needs on both sides of that coin. Um, and then I would just want to add that um, both departments um, and, and Michelle is here also from the library. All of the town departments, I think, really work um, to take that extra step and meet the needs of our residents. And so um, putting that out there that we can be those wraparound services. Um, we had a similar program called Neighbors Helping Neighbors some years ago. 
and we found that volunteers would identify situations that were above and beyond the scope of what they were going to do as a volunteer, but then they knew that they had a resource in the Senior and Disabled Center or um, Human Services to do those supportive wraparound services. We do financial casework, we do assistance with applying for um, entitlements, we do clinical counseling, we do food bank, we do dial a ride. So between um, the various departments in town, I think um, we would love to be considered a resource for um, when those situations above and beyond what a volunteer feels comfortable with um, can handle. So um, it's a great kickoff. Perfect. That's, that's exactly what we imagine that, you know, if a volunteer goes out and realizes that somebody doesn't really have food in their fridge or cannot prepare meals, and that's where we would refer them to to you guys to get them hopefully hooked up with Meals on Wheels or whatever the need might be. That's where those community resources that you guys have available in Newington will be a great opportunity to connect people because they forget that they might be eligible for certain programs and they might not even think, oh, I should call social services. I should call uh, the senior center to see what they have available now. So we'll definitely be mentioning that. And we have included that in our flyer also that we will send out to everybody um, of our Newington flyer that includes the, um, your information which I can't seem to pull it up. I'll just mention while Michelle's locating that, there's probably a transition in the lives of people, let's say in their 50s and 60s, where they used to buy the giant economy size bag of cat food, right? Dry cat food to save money, um, but they can't lift it anymore. Uh, so now they're buying, let's say, more expensive, smaller sizes. But with their volunteers, now they can go back to, you know, saving a little money here and there on the economy size of the cat food or whatever that example might be. Um, just kind of to kind of get into the role of having somebody be there to take the load off of them. And that's the perfect segue to what Michelle is screen sharing now. Yeah, there's so many different um, requests that, that people ask for, whether it be, you know, a ride to the park to walk together, whether it be, um, you know, signing some papers or bringing in the mail. It, it really can be anything. This is a, a an example of a lot of the tasks that people can do, but people can ask for things outside of this list as long as it's not personal care or any licensed work. And um, we're here to help. So if somebody has needs that, you know, just aren't sure if they qualify, they can always give us a call and we can kind of talk through what their needs are and see if they are appropriate. If not, then maybe uh, we'll be referring them to Carol or Diane or maybe to one of the uh, North Central Area Agency on Aging. It really just depends on what the need is. And we'll always be referring people because we are only a volunteer organization. So we know there's a lot of needs beyond our beyond our scope. So let me open it up to questions if anybody has any questions at this time. Good, we answered them all. Perfect. So a quick statement. I, I would, uh, Michelle, you just said we we're only a volunteer organization. And I would absolutely strike the word only from that. Um, a volunteer organization has the power and the flexibility to do tremendous things. We are only the town of Newington and we're very excited to have you uh, join us. Thank you. Thanks for that. If I can just add, um, thank you for welcoming me in today. And as Diane and Carol have been saying, um, I, we never think twice about picking up the phone and calling them and saying, hey, you know, we need some help and that they're wonderful to all the patrons that we have in Newington. And we do get a large group of people that want to volunteer and sometimes we 
exactly the right job for them. So I think this, you know, again, a win-win where we can refer people back to you. So thank you for all that you're doing and including us. Great. Great. We look Michelle, I wanted to ask, do you have a presence in Southeastern Connecticut as well? I'm located down in the Groton Mystic area. Yeah, actually yesterday I was in um, Westbrook. Um, next week we'll be down in Clinton. So we're definitely uh, have a presence in that area. We are doing a really interesting pilot program in the town of Clinton with their human services department, their police department, which is um, using auxiliary police volunteers that are that are now their volunteers and then their human services are referring. So yes, definitely. We have a lot of great volunteers in that area. I also and wanted to add in that we also um, we're working on setting up a partnership with the Navy Federal Credit Union employees. Um, I'm a veteran from the National Guard Army and uh, We've made a connection with them, so they're yep. uh, going to make a account to be volunteers. That's fantastic. Thanks. And we could certainly follow up with you on that, Michelle, number three, so thank you. Yeah, Michelle was talking about the shoreline, and she was also uh, doing a TV interview yesterday. So any type of no cost, we'll be honest, no cost marketing is what we're looking for. We're unashamed. How's, how's that, Diane? <laughs> TV access um, channels are a great opportunity to continue to get the word out because a lot of people are home and, and like to watch those programs to see what's new in their community. Um, so we're hoping that Newington, it's a long-term relationship that benefits in kind of like a self-sustaining way, your residents in need and um, kind of the vision of our board members. Uh, you can't see Hope, but um, she is just such a fantastic supporter. Um, her technology background is helping with upgrading our website our technology to make sure that stays safe and is a nice user experience when people do visit it. So thank you to our board. Hope, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Uh, I think the team did a great job on giving you appreciation for all of the different services that the company can offer to uh, the communities and to the states and um, and we're growing right where Michelle and MD have done a fabulous job with Donna's help to be able to continue to advertise and go to communities like yourselves to figure out what we, else we could do to help and how do we continue to grow and offer those same services across the state so um, we really appreciate everyone's support and, um, and obviously reach out to us if, uh, if you have other questions that we can certainly help with, but um, we're really excited for the partnership. Thanks, Hope. And Jamie, did you have a question? Yes, I was just wondering if local radio stations, do they do free advertisements for nonprofit organizations? If it, does anyone know? I actually had researched that part of their FCC federal license is they have to offer some um, community service time and um, they used to like, for example, on TIC AM radio 1080, they used to have something at like 6am but with job cuts and budget cuts um, that's not as easily available but every now and then you find somebody who cares a lot about this issue of helping older or disabled adults and they can make it happen. So we try to do that on a um, community by community basis. Good question. Thanks, Jamie. Jamie is also one of our maturity works um, helpers for Michelle behind the scenes. 
Yep, we're very grateful to have them and we're looking to recruit a few more uh, Maturity Works uh, employees. So keep in mind that great hometown hero uh, opportunity for somebody in Newington, if anyone comes to mind, um, keep us in mind. Definitely. Have you considered putting a short presentation on YouTube that we can refer people to so they can learn more about your organization? Hmm, that's a good idea. We yeah, do we have a YouTube channel. There's uh, a lot of interviews under the name Founders Focus that Michelle and MD have done, but we can certainly condense this into you know being accessible on YouTube. There's how-to videos for our volunteers, um, our hometown heroes, et cetera. But um, yeah, just trying to make the most use of um, digital media, it's, it's exactly what we need. So thanks for that. Yeah, good idea, Michelle. And so we're gonna send out to people on the call um, the PDF of the brochure. There's also some uh, printed pads like tear off mini flyers that are available. And we can, uh, if your organization is local and you'd like your own supply of those, in addition to what we'll make available through Diane and Carol's teams, just let Michelle know. We can arrange to have those dropped off. Oh, there's one now. Mm -hmm. And also um, we'll, you'll see in Michelle's email signature, we are on, or thanks to Michelle, we are active on all the major social platforms as well. Yep. And that, all those are on the bottom of our website. You could check them out. And um, any ways that we can help other Newington residents, we did receive um, you know, a small gift card from Lowe's. We do have some ability to help people um, possibly buy some supplies if they needed a door re door handle replaced or whatever it might be, we're willing to help people in different ways. So we're hoping to get that feedback from volunteers that might say, hey, this person might need to do whatever it is. Um, so there's all kinds of ways that, that we can be a resource. So just, just let us know. If you wanna put your email in, if we don't already have your email, you could put that in the chat. Um, so we could get you more information and um, we can follow up, follow up with you guys. So without um, any other questions, I think Diane or Carol, um, I think yeah. you did a great job. Thanks so for clever, that. Diane. <laughs>